mabuti pa kaya? For over six and a half decades, Zydus Cadilla has been nurturing life. Starting out in 1952, the group was founded by Mr. Raman Bhai B. Patel with a vision to bring innovative pharmaceutical solutions to life. Zydus is today a well-integrated global healthcare company with a proven track record. With core business in high-end APIs and intermediates, finished dosage formulations, research and development, manufacturing, animal health, and wellness. Zydus has a global presence in more than 55 countries worldwide, with stalwarts at the helm of affairs the group has been looking at newer horizons of success and growth. Zydus is today a tour de force known for its 
robust and globally compliant manufacturing infrastructure with state-of-the-art technology. Quality excellence that ensures safety and precision in pharmaceutical products. And an innovation-driven, rich development pipeline. A team of over 1,400 scientists work on the drug discovery and development program with dedicated teams working on biologicals and vaccines. A cutting-edge NCE research program at the Zydus Research Center has helped launch products that are addressing unmet healthcare needs. In 2013, the group launched India's first-in-class novel drug, Lipoglin, to treat diabetic dyslipidemia. In 2014, the group launched Exemtia, the world's first biosimilar of Adali Mumab. Zydus was also the first in India and only the second company in the world to launch a tetravalent inactivated influenza vaccine, Vaxiflu-4. With its cutting-edge expertise, Zydus is a partner of choice with a successful track record of partnerships with global pharma majors. The group aspires to be a leading global healthcare provider with a robust product pipeline, opening up new pathways through innovation and quality excellence. The group shall be a research-based company by 2020. Over 23,000 people at Zydus spread across four continents are driven by a mission to create healthier, happier communities globally. Zydus, dedicated to life in all its dimensions. Our spirit of offering value is at its peak during the current pandemic times as we continue to go extra mile in ensuring availability and accessibility of our products to the communities. At Zydus Healthcare Philippines, our aim is to create a healthier community. We partner with physicians in making therapies accessible to the Filipino patients by offering value through its high-quality medicines at affordable prices. With a neurosciences portfolio, our passion is to help patients and physicians conquer their challenges, being reliable in times of need, helping patients to be in control, help them set their minds free, and wake up to a brand new day. Zydus Neurosciences, a promise for healthier minds as we see health in every smile.
over six and a half decades, Zydus Cadilla has been nurturing life. Starting out in 1952, the group was founded by Mr. Raman Bhai B. Patel with a vision to bring innovative pharmaceutical solutions to life. Zydus is today a well-integrated global healthcare company with a proven track record with core business in high-end APIs and intermediates, finished dosage formulations, research and development, manufacturing, animal health, and wellness. Zydus has a global presence in more than 55 countries worldwide with stalwarts at the helm of affairs. The group has been looking at newer horizons of success and growth. Zydus is today a tour de force known for its robust and globally compliant manufacturing infrastructure with state-of-the-art technology. Quality excellence that ensures safety and precision in pharmaceutical products and an innovation-driven rich development pipeline. A team of over 1400 scientists work on the drug discovery and development program with dedicated teams working on biologicals and vaccines. A cutting edge NCE research program at the Zydus Research Center has helped launch products that are addressing unmet healthcare needs. In 2013, the group launched India's first-in-class novel drug, Lipoclip, to treat diabetic dyslipidemia. In 2014, the group launched Exemtia, the world's first biosimilar of Adali Mumen. Zydus was also the first in India and only the second company in the world to launch a tetravalent inactivated influenza vaccine. Vaxiflu 4. With its cutting-edge expertise, Zydus is a partner of choice with a successful track record of partnerships with global pharma majors. The group aspires to be a leading global healthcare provider with a robust product pipeline, opening up new pathways through innovation and quality excellence. The group shall be a research-based company by 2020. Over 23,000 people at Zydus, spread across four continents, are driven by a mission to create healthier, happier communities globally. Zydus, dedicated to life in all its dimensions. Our spirit of offering value is at its peak during the current pandemic times as we continue to go extra mile in ensuring availability and accessibility of our products to the communities. At Zydus Healthcare Philippines, our aim is to create a healthier community. We partner with physicians in making therapies accessible to the Filipino patients by offering value through its high-quality medicines at affordable prices. With a neurosciences portfolio, our passion is to help patients and physicians conquer their challenges, being reliable in times of need, helping patients to be in control, help them set their minds free, and wake up to a brand new day. Zydus Neurosciences, a promise for healthier minds as we see health in every smile.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's webinar hosted by the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. We would want to thank you for joining us tonight. Wherever you may be, we pray that you will continue to be safe and well. I am Dr. Pauline Nang Lim, a Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Fellow in the Medical City, and I will be your host and moderator for this evening. Tonight, we are presenting Rethink Screen Time, the new normal for parents and children. Before we go further, I would first want to present our house rules. Reminders. All attendees are in listening mode. It is helpful to use a two-way earphones, headset, or headphones for clearer audio input. The lecture is presented as PowerPoint slides. Please ensure that your device is in full screen mode. Your questions will be entertained after the lecture. Please use the Q&A box to type in your questions. To claim your certificate of attendance, please answer a short survey which will be emailed to you after attending the postgraduate course. To start our program, we will have the invocation followed by the Philippine National Anthem. Heavenly Father, are you really there? And do you hear and answer every child's prayer? Some say that heaven is far away But I feel it close around me as I pray Heavenly Father, I remember now Something that Jesus told disciples long ago Suffer the children to come to me Father, in prayer I'm coming now to Thee Pray He is there, speak He is listening, you are His child, His love now surrounds you, He hears your prayer, prayer. He, he loves the children. children. Of such such is, is the, the kingdom, kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Heavenly Father, are you really there? And do you hear and answer every child's prayer? Some say that heaven is far away, but I feel it close around me as I pray. Heavenly Father, I remember now Something that Jesus told disciples long ago Suffer the children to come to me Father, in prayer I'm coming now to Thee Ang isla ng wakaw, ang huwag ako ay naratid ng 
just joining us, welcome and good evening. Here is our program for tonight. To formally open our webinar, I am pleased to welcome the Vice President of the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Vanessa Kathleen Kaingho. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. Uh, the past two to three weeks has been very challenging for all of us, bad news has been coming from all directions, which can all be traced to the second wave in this COVID-19 pandemic, in which we are already experiencing the second year of its duration. But when I saw that we have 209 participants tonight, uh, it made me happy because it means that our efforts uh, to put up all these webinars is reaching more people. And I'm happy to note that uh, your interest in our webinars is not waning. So in behalf of the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatrists, let me welcome you to this ninth webinar uh, we started last Jul July 2020, and we are already on our ninth. The title of tonight's webinar is Rethink Screen Time, the New Normal for Parents and Children Online. Again, welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kaingbog. Before we introduce our esteemed speaker, we would like to present some questions which we hope to answer by the end of this webinar. So for our first question, true or false? The longer the time the child spends on the computer screen, the poorer the child's mental health. Second question, true or false? An absolute or ideal amount of screen time a child spends per day has been determined by experts. Third question, True or false, parents should be concerned not only with the time their children spend online, but with what they do online as well. So please take note of these questions as we hope to answer them after the lecture. A couple of more um, reminders. So please take time to answer the short survey, which we will be emailing to you by tomorrow morning. After answering the survey, your certificate of attendance will automatically be emailed to you. Now, without further ado, let me introduce our esteemed speaker. Dr. Georgina M. Gozo Oliver is a graduate of the College of Medicine of the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center. She decided to take up medicine after graduating with a degree of BS Psychology from the University of the Philippines in Diliman in order to reach her ultimate goal, which is to help children with special needs through giving direct service in the clinical setting. This goal took shape in her mind early in life since she grew up with a younger brother with autism spectrum disorder. Right after obtaining her phys physician's license, she trained in general psychiatry at the Department of Psychiatry of the Veterans Memorial Medical Center. She gained further knowledge and experience in the field when she took her post-residency fellowship training in child and adolescent psychiatry at the UPPGH, Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine. She then returned um, to the Veterans Memorial Medical Center, Department of Psychiatry, where she is at present the Acting Assistant Department Head. Concurrently, Dr. Oliver holds the position of Assistant Professor 4 at the School of Medicine, 
of the Angeles University Foundation, where she heads the Department of Psych Neuropsychiatry. She is a past chair of the Specialty Board of Philippine Psychiatry and is the, and is the current Editor-in-Chief of the Philippine Journal of Psychiatry. Dr. Oliver is a founding member and past president of the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, a diplomat of the Philippine Board of Psychiatry, and a life fellow of the Philippine Psychiatric Association. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Dr. Georgina M. Gozo Oliver. Good evening, ma'am. Congratulations, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am honored to be your speaker for tonight on a topic that is so relevant to these uncertain times. I would like to thank the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry for this opportunity to touch base with all of you. These are my disclosures. I have no actual or potential conflict of interest in the content of this uh, present, in relation to the content of this presentation. I have no direct financial or non-financial relationship with the sponsor of this lecture, Zaidus Philippines. I claim no expertise whatsoever in any aspect of digital science and technology. And this lecture comes from the point of view of one born at the tail end of the baby boomer generation. That is from 1964 to 1940, uh, 1946 to 1964. Okay. My lecture will touch on the following discussion points, although not necessarily in this order. Pre-pandemic, the default mode of interaction can be characterized as real world, face to face, familiar, natural, normal. Uh, it felt relatively comfortable because we were aware of its pitfalls and we knew how to deal with its problems. Virtual was the alternative mode of interaction. As with anything unknown or unfamiliar, we treated the novel strange uh, mode with wariness. It was novel, it was strange. The rules and norms were unfamiliar or were still developing and its risks and benefits have not been fully established yet. This wariness is reflected in the research output and content of research articles on the topic of screens and their effects on children. Much of the research dealt on time on screen time and its effects on the normal development of children. And this led to policies mainly directed at protecting children from the internet. The output was skewed towards the negative effects of the internet on child development. And there are very few pieces written about the positive effects of going online. This is a list of the risks posed when we use the internet excessively. Physical strain to our body because of the prolonged hunched over position while using our gadgets. Retina damage because of the prolonged exposure to the backlight of the screen. Obesity since using screens forces us to sit for long periods of time while snacking probably on easy to prepare fast food. Sleep deprivation, when we become so engrossed in our online activity that we lose all sense of time. Further, the blue light emitted by the screen prevents the release of melatonin in our brain and it makes it harder for us to fall asleep. An NIH study reported that children who spent more than two hours a day on screen, on screen time activities, scored lower on language and thinking tests. And in some of those who spent seven hours or more per day, there was thinning of the brain's gray matter, noted, which is associated with poorer concentration, weaker memory, and slower information processing. 
young children learn best about the world when they can physically engage with it. Active engagement is superior to passively watching digital content on screen. Impaired socialization skills is another effect. The use of devices used to be largely solitary. The user becomes so engrossed on what is happening virtually that it shuts out the real world. Real life interaction with warm bodies like parents, like siblings and friends are replaced by online quote unquote friends. However, as technology improved, this barrier may have been largely overcome as multiplayer games like COD, COD, Dota are now available. Okay. Weakened emotional judgment is another effect listed. Exposure to violent media content or those with antisocial themes like Grand Theft Auto are feared to negatively influence the development of good values and have been associated with increased aggression levels in the youth. Interacting with peers, making friends, forming relationships in the real world, help the child know more about himself as other people's reactions are mirrors through which the child discovers his strengths, his weaknesses, and his preferences among others. It is difficult to fully trust virtual people online since the tendency is usually to present the good side of life. It is difficult to gauge whether or not the friend we see online is the real person or is a figment of imagination or fantasy. And this situation gives rise to new concepts like FOMO, fear of missing out, Facebook envy, Facebook depression, etc. Uh, there is also a risk of becoming addicted to the internet. Most computer games are designed to maximize the engagement time of the user by constant stimulation of the brain's reward system that may lead to the user's pursuit of rewarding activities in order to feel the dopamine rush, which is actually the mechanism for addiction. The documentation of these risk factors led to the formulation of guidelines in the use of screens for children. The um, foremost of this is the American Academy of Pediatrics. Okay. Who's, um, nine, uh, whose 2013 recommendations were as follows zero to one year for children zero to one year zero screen time was recommended and for those two years and older there should be they should be online at more than two hours per day this was met with consternation by many parents and kids and was deemed unrealistic and in 2016 the aap issued new sets a new set of guidelines no screen for children 18 months and younger, no screens were still recommended except in live video chats with family and friends. For those 18 months to two years, limited screen time, although no solo use. And also the content should be high quality programming and it also should be supervised by parents to ensure understanding of the child. For those children two to five years old, it was recommended that they could use the screen for one hour a day. Although um, the parents should still watch with their children to be able to explain the application of what they're watching to the real world. Children who are six years or older, uh, for children who are six years or older, um, there was no um, actual time limit recommended but it said that the limit should be cons con the, the limit should be consistent the limits on time spent and types of media should be consistent and the screen 
the use of the screen should not affect sleep, exercise, meals, and other priority activities. In 2017, the Canadian Pediatric Society also came up with their own recommendations. The World Health Organization did not come out with guidelines specifically for the use of screens by children, but its guidelines on physical activity, sedentary behavior, and sleep for children under five years old did mention screen time as follows. For one-year-olds, sedentary screen time is not recommended. For those two to four years old, sedentary screen time should not be more than one hour. Less is better. Reading and storytelling with a caregiver is encouraged. And this could be with the use of screens or physical books. Better physical books, I would say. Okay. Most, if not all, of the guidelines focused on children in their formative years. These findings on teens and screens were attributed to Gary Goldfield, a professor of pediatrics and psychology at the University of Ottawa, in one article that I came across. And it said, the best mental health and cognitive outcomes in teens are those who do one hour of physical activity each day, sleep eight to 10, 10 hours per day, and use screens rec recreationally less than two hours per day. So major consistent sila on the two hours. Then COVID-19 came and shook the very fund the foundation of the world as we know it. And suddenly we had to shift to virtual mode in order for our lives to go on. We had to live in the largely unknown, unexplored virtual world of the digital screen because the real world has become more dangerous and threatened the survival of our species. Thus, we have been forced to focus on the benefits that the digital screen had to offer in spite of the existence of the long list of risks that have been compiled about it. So at this point, Time-based screen limits no, no longer made sense. For adults, the workplace shifted to the home. We all know this. Work hours became more flexible. For children, the classroom likewise shifted to the home. And school hours were less rigidly time-bound, what with the asynchronous activities as well as the synchronous activities. On the surface, this seemed beneficial for everyone. There was no need to commute to and from work or school and brave the traffic. And there, there seemed to be more control of our time. We soon realized, however, that the blurring of the physical, the temporal, and the psychological divide between home and work or school can take its toll on us. Actually, this could be a subject for another long lecture. Sorry. Sorry, wait. I have to look for my slide. Okay, after discussing the risks, the, the long, uh, the long, there were a lot of articles on risk. It is but fair to examine the benefits. And mind you, the list is much shorter. Uh, this highlights the fact that our wariness of screens may have led us to the tendency to take the potential benefits that screens provide for granted. So among those listed as benefits for the moderate use of screens would be improvement of motor skills and coordination through video games, Educational benefits, such as being able to do homework, to do research, to access supplementary learning materials online. Uh, and this was good for us parents because our children did not have to leave the home. This was also true for socialization and communication through texting and social media use. Uh, 
there was also there is now also available rec recreation through online and multiplayer games so our kids had um our kids had a uh, good time had fun with their friends all of all of it in the safety of our homes the question that bears asking at this point is where should we adults that means parents teachers doctors stand on this issue how do we strike a balance between strictly protecting our children from the dangers of the unknown virtual world and allowing them to independently independently explore it fully screen time research has so far yielded no definite results upon which we can base our answer to this question. The terms moderate use and excessive use have not been operationalized consistently across studies. There is a lack of strong longitudinal studies on the subject, and screen time is not the only factor that may have an impact on child development. It is just one aspect of this issue. Other factors other than the length of time of exposure come into play and influence the results. Factors like the type of content consumed, the environment that surrounds the child while online. More studies focused on the beneficial effects of screen technology on child development are needed. As this is the largely ignored area of inquiry, that current circumstances forces us to look more deeply into. I came across the ABCD study in the course of doing my research in preparation for tonight's lecture. It, is, um, it, is, it was commissioned by the National Institutes of Health in the USA. It is a long-term study on brain development and it will last for a period of 10 years from 2015 to 2025. It recruited 11,750 children aged nine to 10 years old, and they, they will study exposure to substances, screen time, sleep pattern, engagement in arts and sports activities, and their effects on brain development, cog as well as cognitive and, men cognitive and mental health. Okay, meanwhile, while waiting for the results of this confirmatory long-term research, let us look at what picture emerges from the numerous cross-sectional studies available to date. Okay, so I, I quote uh, Stephanie Pappas of the American Psychological Association. The picture that emerges is that one, Youngest children do not learn well from screens. Two, co-viewing media with parents can protect young kids from the harmful effects of screen time. Three, TV viewing is associated with the development of obesity in youth. And four, meeting, sleep, screen time, and physical activity guidelines is associated with the best mental health outcomes. Given these interim findings, what strategies should today's parents and children implement in order to mitigate the risks, as well as harness and amplify the potential benefits of screens used by our children? Okay, so we've gone through this uh, list earlier, but this time uh, we will uh, suggest steps on how to alleviate this, the negative effects of this uh, off screen time. Physical strain to the eyes and body is associated with retinal damage, blurred vision, worsening myopia, neck and shoulder pain, again, due to the hunched over posture sleep deprivation due to, due to the effect of the blue light 
from the screen on melatonin secretion, obesity related to a sedentary lifestyle along with snacking on fast food that could be driven by the subliminal messages of the ads that pop up on screen while we're doing homework or while we're doing other work. To alleviate or to mitigate these negative effects, uh, I came across the 20-20-20 rule uh, from the American Academy of Ophthalmology in order to address um, the eyesight problem. So the 2020 rule involves pausing from the screen every 20 minutes by looking at an object 20 feet away for 20 seconds. And this is enough to rest the eyes, according to them. Hold on. Okay. What else? We also should check our posture and do stretching of back and legs every 30 minutes or so to improve our circulation. We should also be aware of the types and amount of food consumed as snacks. And not to forget, we should keep hydrated by drinking water regularly. We should also plan for one hour of physical activity each day preferably outdoors and in a green space. We should allow for screen-free period for at least 30 minutes before bedtime. Actually, 30 minutes is short. It should be, I think, should be at least one hour. I don't know how realistic that is and how doable it is in your home. Okay. Okay, what about the psychological effects? We have delayed learning in young children. Young children learn better by using all five senses, not just the sense of sight and hearing, more, most often utilized during screen interaction. Their sense of smell, their sense of touch and proprioception, and their sense of taste should be stimulated as well. Letting them watch the screen passively hinders optimal brain development. Okay. The latest guidelines on the use of screens by, by young children, for young children by the AAP and the WHO before 2020 actually still apply. Young children require hands-on exploration and face-to-face -face interactions. They have no symbolic thinking yet. So, uh, symbolic thinking of ability involves language reading, writing, okay? So they don't have that ability yet. They have immature attention control and have low memory flexibility. These qualities are needed to be able to process or to con and convert two-dimensional images presented on the screen to the three-dimensional real world uh, that we exist in. Exposure to high quality educational programs with characters that the child can relate to has been known to be beneficial. Okay, so you might be familiar or those in my generation or the generation after us will be familiar with Sesame Street and Batibot, the Filipino version of Sesame Street. My children grew up on Barney, the dinosaur, as well as Dora, the explorer. Okay. According to Barbara J. Wilson, uh, a noted psychologist, media influence in children depend more on the type of content that children find attractive rather than on the sheer amount of time they spend in front of the screen. So she emphasized content. Children learn about the causes and nature of different emotions by watching emotional experiences by media characters. So they often experience empathy with these characters. They, uh, they are able to tie up with them emotionally. And these characters become role models for them to be able in, in the way they process their own emotions and in the way they treat other people as well. So it is very important. 
For impaired socialization skills, these are some of the mitigating strategies suggested. Designate screen-free periods and screen-free zones at home. So for example, dining table is the screen-free zone and the screen-free time is during meal times, for example, or the bedroom at bedtime uh, so that uh, they will be able to sleep better or sleep early, okay? Another uh, suggestion is scheduling family time, play time, sleep time, okay? Aside from screen time to ensure face-to-face -face encounters and min meaningful interactions. Okay. Further, we should not just uh, look at the external or we should not just control the external uh, or factors external to the child. We should also um, empower or uh, make our children protect themselves by promoting values of digital citizenship in order to build competent, resilient, and confident uh, screen users. So how do we do this? We e equip children with skills and knowledge to understand the risks and negative consequences of internet use, as well as to understand their own responsibility towards other internet users. Enhancing our children's ability to discern safe from harmful content and teaching them to distinguish information of true value from fake news and manipulation will help in strengthening their resilience and confidence, as well as our confidence ourselves as our kids navigate the web, okay? I think this should also hold true for us because in my experience, my children know more about this than I do, okay? So what are the, these competencies? The digital and technical skills need, needed for, to be a good digital citizen include the following. They should be able to search, evaluate, and manage information, interact, infor uh, interact, share information found, and collaborate online, develop and create content, use safety and protection features. Okay, this is a screen grab from a site that promotes digital citizenship called Safe Sitter that I found online. It concisely illustrates the elements of digital citizenship that we and our kids should be aware of. Okay. What strategies can we use to optimize the benefits of screen use? The AAP, uh, according to the AAP, new media benefits largely depend on the child age, the child's age, developmental age, the personality of the child, and the environment where the media is used, as well as the media content and design. Okay. The environment where media is used by children should be where parents are accessible for qu queries and guidance. The, the child should be should be safe, should be feel safe, okay, in that space. And that space should be responsive to their needs. Okay. What else? We should encourage children to use digital platforms to do something creative. They shouldn't just use, uh, uh, I'm not sure if I'm using the right word, digital platforms or digital applications that, uh, are not interactive because um, they don't get much from it when they're passive. Okay, so how do you encourage children to use digital platforms? You know, there are apps that encourage children to write a song, for example, to choreograph a dance, to take pictures, to follow a recipe. And there are games, they can play interactive games that require action. Uh, one of Two of those that I found online are here on the, uh, are illustrated here. There's Wii Sports, which encourages children to play with a virtual partner with tennis, for example, or golf. 
Um, and then there is piano tiles, uh, which encourages children to uh, play musical pieces on the tablet. And uh, actually I played that and I enjoyed that very much. Okay. So we should also, uh, as, as part of the optimizing strategies, we should be able to produce high quality content that is targeted to the developmental level of the child. Okay, I came across the term gamification and I looked it up. The, the meaning is the application of the typical elements of game playing to areas of activity. Um, and this is usually used as an online marketing technique to encourage engagement with a product of, or service. And in, the, in our case, the product or service that uh, is useful children would be education, teaching, classes, okay? So what does it involve? Uh, gamification involves elements of game playing, including point scoring, competition with others, rules of play, and of course, rewards. Okay, it introduces the element of fun in learning and it involves reinforcement designed to achieve a maximum duration of engagement, which is what we really need, which is what we need our children to be able to do, to maximize engagement and not have their attention drift off somewhere else. Okay. Uh, indeed, it takes a village to raise a child as the oft quoted African proverb goes. And the village in this situation is composed of not just the parents and other uh, responsible family members at home. It involves teachers, doctors, content providers, app developers, owners of digital platforms, government agencies. These are all part of this global village involved in raising our children. This question by, by uh, Cal Newport, I think is a good guide for us to be able to gauge whether we are spending too much or just enough time on the internet. Okay, it says, can't move. Okay, it says, what value are we getting out of the time you spend looking at screens? And what value are you losing? So the value we get, for example, good work output or good grades or learning something useful, as well as entertainment, vis-a-vis -vis the value we lose, like maybe time spent with family and building relationships with significant people in our lives. This should be carefully assessed, okay? Um, this will also reflect our priorities in life. Balancing the time we spend virtually with the time we spend in the real world is likewise good advice. And this and this is came from another quote by um, Doreen Dodge and McGee. Okay. So balance between screen-based and non-screen-based activities is important. We must also remember that in the eyes of a child, everything is new and exciting. And this is especially true in the virtual world where content is designed to be attractive and engaging. We are the gatekeepers responsible for filtering the information they see and hear for putting things into per perspective for them. We're about to end. These are my references for this presentation. And to end, we need to rethink our relationship with the internet. We have to familiarize ourselves with it, just as we should get to know our children's friends, our, uh, their classmates and other people our children mingle with daily. Because for now, the internet is their friend, okay? 
the new normal for parents and children online is actually the old normal, but harder, especially for parents who have to carry the additional burden of being provider, parent, teacher, all rolled into one. However, if we do what we should be doing as parents, we will eventually be able to set our children free to explore the world online. We just have to do the work, okay? Eventually, we will be able to set them free without fear of them being harmed by unscrupulous elements. And once this is accomplished, the load we have to carry becomes considerably lighter. Thank you for listening. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, Dr. Oliver, for providing us with information and strategies to guide our children on healthy use of their gadgets and screen time. Actually, I think for adults also, especially during these challenging times when outdoor activities and face-to-face -face interactions have become very limited. I really learned a lot as a parent and as a, and as a psychiatrist, and I think I will be more equipped to help my friends and um, who are parents and our patients as well. So I'm sure that our participants are looking forward to asking their questions. Um, but before we proceed to our open forum, we are all in for a great treat tonight. Um, remember the three questions we posted earlier. So now is the time to answer them with a chance of winning this book, um, On Call Psychiatry 4th Edition. So to win, um, participants will be given 10 seconds each, uh, 10 seconds per question to type their answers on the chat box after I have read the question. The first one to type the correct answer on the chat box as confirmed by our organizing committee will be considered the winner. Um, unfortunately, a participant may only, uh, may only win once. We know there are a lot of us here are, who are very competitive. So in the event that the participant who has already been declared a winner wins again, the second participant who types the answer correctly in the chat box is considered the uh, final winner for that round. So for the answers, kindly type the whole word true or false. We will not be accepting T or F. So um, let's begin. So we will start. Um, we will start looking after, the count will start after I have read the questions, okay? So, uh, question number one, true or false? The longer the time the child spends on the computer screen, the poorer the child's mental health. Game. So again, kindly type the whole word, true or false? Okay, so um, here we have the answer. False, okay. So let's now go to the second question. True or false? An absolute or ideal amount of screen time a child spends per day has been determined by experts. Get go. Kindly type the whole word. You won't be accepting this TRF. Okay. So for the answer, the answer is false. All right, so for the third question, again, true or false, parents should be concerned not only with the time their children spend online, but with what they do online as well. Timer starts now. Okay, so may we have the answer. The answer is true. Thank you to our very active participants. Please stay tuned. The winners will be announced um, after, uh, uh, by the end of our webinar. 
So representatives from our uh, pharmaceutical partner, Zydos, will personally get in touch with the winners to coordinate on how to get their prizes. All right. So I'm sure that our audience have a lot of questions. So for our open forum, I would like to welcome back Dr. Oliver. And um, now we'd like to invite um, everyone to ask questions and to also maybe can type through the chat box or the Q&A box. Okay. So um, for our first question, So, in your opinion, in rethinking screen time, should, should this be applied to both neurotypical kids and kids with special needs? In rethinking screen time, should this be applied to both neurotypical okay, and kids with special needs? Um, I don't get what you exactly uh, what you mean by in rethinking screen time. Um, can, can you clarify the question, please? Maybe we can ask. Um, yeah. Maybe we can ask um, Dr. Monterona to uh, please unmute to clarify the question. Maybe, maybe you can, type maybe it. You can, you can type it in. Okay. All right. Maybe for while we're waiting for um, clarification on the question, we could move yes. on to the next one. So, uh, is there any study that proves that the longer the child is exposed online, um, can cause um, ADHD? So, ah. Okay, um, I have not come across any study on that uh, subject matter. Okay, um, uh, can it cause ADHD? Um, there have, in my readings, there have been no association as uh, with uh, screen time and online use to the cause of ADHD. It's not in the list of the of possible causes of ADHD. Uh, there's another question. Is there any study that proves that depression on children can also be the result of longer exposure to online activities like social media ga games, etc.? Okay, so it says here uh, depression on children as a result of uh, uh, prolonged screen use. Um, there, there have been studies uh, that say that, but again, there are also studies that uh, that say that um, when a child is depressed, the other way around, when a child is depressed, then um, that's when they start using a lot of the internet. Okay, so the relationship um, can go both ways. Although still, these are cross-sectional studies, so uh, the evidence is not very strong as of yet, as of now. Thank you, Victoria. And then I think we have several questions from the chat box. So in consideration of Filipino culture and the pandemic, what is the ideal screen time among children? Um, as I, okay. I think uh, what wasn't made clear in the lecture was um, how to separate, when you say screen time, um, I wasn't able to define that. When I say screen time, I was, uh, it meant recreational screen time. So the school uh, screen time in school, screen time at work wasn't counted. So all of these effects, all of these suggestions apply to recreational screen time where you spend uh, where you spend time online just for entertainment and not for, not uh, for productive so-called productive activities. So um, what was the question again? 
Um, is uh, in consideration of the Filipino culture and pandemic, um, what is the ideal screen time among children? Okay. Uh, Yon, uh, I think I had um, I had a quote in the last one of the last slides. Um, there is no abs. There has been no absolute period of time established, but you should ask yourselves the question. So when I'm spending time on screen, what value am I getting out of the time? And what value am I losing by spending my time on the screen? So when you are able to answer that question, then you will know what is ideal for you, what the ideal uh, screen time is for you. I hope I answered your question. Doctora, um, we as for the first question, for Doctora, um, we got clarification. So, as a rule, kids with autism has uh, have very strict rules. At times, um, zero screen time, and should we be more open to lengthening duration for kids with autism? Oh, I, as I said, there is really no absolute rule about the duration. And, um, you know, the, the screen time that, that uh, uh, the time that we spend on screen is actually um, subjective, okay? So it's case to case. So, um, so I guess uh, for children with autism who are very strict about rules, they can do it gradually, okay? Like uh, uh, shorten it slowly, little by little, across a longer period of time. And I think that should that should work, okay? Uh, of course, you don't go from 30 minutes to zero. Uh, you will start a war with a child. Yes, thank you, Doctor, for... Um, for that po. And then we have another question. So during this pandemic, how can parents help their toddlers and young children in socialization with others their age since they can't um, physically interact with other children? For example, play dates. Again, please, sorry. My, my attention is wandering. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can you do it? During this pandemic, answer? Ayan po. How can parents help their toddlers or young children in social in socializing with uh, kids their age since they cannot um, have physical interactions with other children? So, for example, play dates. We don't. We can't have play dates. Uh, again, we're not eliminating the screen from our lives totally. So it's okay to have play dates. Pwedeng online, online nga lang, hindi yung, you don't go to, from, you don't, you know, you don't ask the children to come to your house, but you can schedule play dates online, uh, and you can have activities online as well. Mm, uh, like set a date, like this, like this uh, webinar, like set a time and a place, uh, no, not a place, set a time and a platform and a date for the children to be able to interact with each other. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. I hope uh, the answer, uh, the question was answered. And um, yeah. uh, for other questions, um, are there studies on social media and its relationship with children in adolescents' mental health? Sorry. Um, the question, Doctora, is: Are there studies on social media and its relationship with children and adolescents' mental health? Okay. Again, uh, the cross sec. There are some cross sectional studies that say there is uh, um, that you know use of media, use of uh, screens online may affect mental health. Um, well, maybe for the vulnerable ones, uh, it's possible, but we cannot generalize it for all children. Okay. And plus the fact that, again, um, the studies that we have so far are mostly cross-sectional. 
So they, they are um, cross-sectional studies are like um, hypothetical questions that need to be proven by long-term studies. So we can't really say for sure as of now. Thank you, Dr. And then um, some more questions. So among adolescents, how can we control screen time when we don't have any way to observe them or watch over them? You know, that would be the problem. Um, because uh, because of our inability to, um, because in our generation or maybe those among you who are younger, uh, we, we always experience that our children know more about uh, life virtually than us. So they learn more about it. The, 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 the information about it usually and they're, they're, it's so natural for them. They learn very fast. They don't, you know, they know, don't even need to think. It, it's like intuitive to them. So um, for adolescents now, uh, our experience with them is um, when they go to school, they, I think uh, they're also being taught the man how to be good digital citizens. At least that's my experience with my kids. So we don't really need to worry too much about, about that. Um, in, in my opinion, we should update ourselves with, with, you know, with, uh, with rules about the virtual world as well so that we don't get into any misunderstandings with our children, with our teens, uh, so that we are on the same page when we talk about, um, you know, when we talk about things virtual. I hope I answered, I answered your question. Thank you, ma'am. So um, we have a question for Doctora from Dr. Conception. So my question is, how much is too much? How do we properly uh, reconcile setting limits? Is it how long they're spending online or the purpose that they spend online? Uh, I think it's really the purpose that they spend online at this point in, in time. Uh, uh, we can't really stick to the rules that were made pre-pandemic because you know everything everything has moved online nowadays. So we have to um, distinguish between what is important to do online and what can be done offline. So we have to strike a balance between those two. So. Uh, nowadays, we really have to dissect what's going on in the virtual world and um, look more deeply into it because we haven't done that uh, in 2019 or even before. Okay. Now is the time to look into it. Thank you, Doctor. And the next, um, what advice can we give uh, teenagers or millennials experiencing FOMO and social comparison from social media use? Okay. Um, FOMO is fear of missing out, right? Okay. Um, it, it, it goes beyond uh, FOMO. It goes beyond... It goes beyond online uh, use because um, off, uh, they should have offline lives. They should have, they should uh, be able to, we should uh, uh, supply them with a perspective that, um, you know, the virtual world, the screen is not all of it. Uh, that is not your life. That is not 100% of it. That, there are other aspects in life. Uh, what you see on screen may not be, as I said earlier, may not be real because the tendency for many people, they just post uh, things online that are happy, that are, that are positive, positive about their about life. life. You, you never really get to see, or you only get to see a few of them who post about their difficulties Okay, so um, uh, life is not 
uh, uh, life as projected online is very filtered. It's not, it is just a portion of reality. Okay. We just, we have to, um, I'm so articulate now. We, uh, we just have to put things into perspective for them. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Actually, doctora, that's a very common among our ano, mga adolescent and patients. That's, uh, that's a complaint that we usually hear from them. So thank you po for that. And um, we have another question. So is it true that the longer exposure in online games that uh, Basically, they're asking if there is a relationship between a long, prolonged exposure in online games and um, development of um, aggressive or violent behavior in children. Okay, that's where um, that's where content comes in. That's why we need to um, monitor what the children are watching or doing online. Uh, it is also important to note the age of the child and his developmental level because um, for younger children who, who have um, who have not seen or who have not much experience about the world, uh, this may affect them and they may just they may think that that's the way to, to react to situations um, just because that's what they see on screen. So again, it is very important to put things into perspective and probably balance it with um, other content that are positive. Yes, po. Doctor, I agree. And maybe um, if ever con such contents come up, it, uh, it is important that I think a parent or an adult will always be there to supervise the child. So another question po, uh, my nephew can't sit still during meal times without looking at the screen of his tablet. He's just around two years old. This affects the amount of food that he consumes. What are the yes. possible steps to take to lessen the occurrence of this? Thank you. Okay, offhand, what comes to mind is, um, make the distract the child make you know um make the food more attractive or make the mealtime experience more attractive than what is going on online uh or on on, on his screen and um well you know it's so easy to say so difficult to do but you have to be creative because that's the way you distract the child a two-year-old from his preoccupation. Unless, Pauline, you have another suggestion. <laughs> uh, sometimes, well, as a parent also, doctora, with well, a three-year-old and a four-year-old, sometimes um, I'm guilty of using my gadgets also during meal times. So maybe we have to be aware now we're not oh, using, yes. so we're not using um, gadget true. use straight. Yes, because our actions speak louder than our words, okay? They may hear our words, but they usually follow what we do. Okay, we have another question. Po. So the pandemic is intensifying children's relationship with media in unprecedented ways. How do we reconcile it with the data that heavy use uh, show delays in language, sleep, and obesity problems as shown in earlier studies? Haba, Pauline, wait lang. Ha? Nag-choppy ka kasi. Um, sorry, apakti ulit. <laughs> the, pandemic is, uh, the pandemic is intensifying children's relationship with media in unprecedented ways. How do we reconcile it with the guilt that heavy use may show delays in language, sleep, and obesity problems as shown in earlier studies? Wait lang. Ha? I think I'll look for that question. Is it this one for the younger generation? Uh, no, no. No, doctor. I'm looking for it also. Po. 
Yeah, so I can um, read it. Ang haba kasi. I'll try to find it. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Can't I? It's not here. It's not here. I think the tutorial list for is um, because of the pandemic, so children's um, media use is uh, very much increased. And yun po, yeah, it's been intensifying uh, in unprecedented ways because this is the first time that we encountered such a um, situation. Uh, we, none of us were prepared for this. So um, with that, how do we reconcile it with um, the guilt? Uh, knowing that um, heavy use may lead to delays in language, um, problems with sleep and obesity, as shown po, um, in earlier studies. I think these were presented or you presented for some yeah. of the risks. Po. So how do we deal with the guilt? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, I, I assume that what you mean by uh, intensifying the use, uh, the intensification of the use of the screen, of the digital of digital media, is because of school. Uh, yun na nga eh. um, kapag when it's school, you shouldn't feel guilty because you know the child needs that. We should prioritize that. Um, uh, all we what we can do is control, you know, make sure that aside from schoolwork and some recreational activities online, like socializing, which they also need, that they, that they also have time off, off screen or offline, like, uh, and do physical activities, um, do other things that uh, uh, spend a face-to-face uh, interaction with, with members of the family, etc. It's a matter of balancing online and offline lives. I hope I answered your question. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I'll try to read. Lang po. I, I, I can't read the question also. Um, good evening, doctor. If a child for a time had already habitually spent more screen time than what is advised, or beneficial to a child's development, what is your advice on how we can correct it in a way that they will not resist uh, negatively uh, about the change of the screen time exposure? Nawala. Ay, hello, ma'am. Yeah, nawala. Hello. Hello. Okay. Ay, sorry po, am I, can we, is it okay na po ulit? Um, Can you hear me? Right? Meron sometimes wala. On and off. Okay po. Uh, I'll read the question po again. Um, okay. Good evening, doctor. If a child for a time had already habitually spent more screen time than what is advised or beneficial to a child's development, what is your advice on how we can correct it in a way that they will not um, resist negatively about the change of the screen time exposure? Well, we just need to explain to them. Uh, we need to explain to them uh, the reason for, for the change. Uh, um, I, I guess that's it. Uh, so that they'll understand why um, why such changes happen and hope uh, they get it and accept it. Yes, I think um, proper and effective communication really is important. Um, when we're trying to institute changes in um, our children's routines <laughs> there. And then another one. So does technology compromise the ability of a person with ADHD to focus? Pro very possibly. And, then, <laughs> yes. and in uh, relation to that, uh, 
Ay, sige po. In relation to that, does the online classes may, uh, do online classes wait lang po. Ah. Uh, are online classes more challenging or difficult for children with untreated ADHD? Yes. <laughs> uh, because I doubt if uh, they can sustain their attention if the ADHD is untreated or if you can even uh, make them sit still for, for the time that is needed for them uh, in the classroom. Not unless, of course, um, they, they hyper-focus on something that they really like online. But then, you know, uh, as we know, um, you know, they can all, I don't know, uh, but they can always uh, open other screens while seemingly attending class. And then, you know, be, they may have been playing games without us knowing it. So we have to really monitor them. Si Doctoria, that's another common um, complaint that we get from parents. No. So what do you tell them? <laughs> Their children. <laughs> um, well, actually the same thing for Doctora. We would have to really monitor because um, there's no way naman for us to... Uh, this is apparent, uh, sometimes what they would do is they would be very strict about the time, for example. Uh, class time is over, so you can't use the internet. They, they, they offer something and then the child will retaliate sa sabihin niya but then um hindi pa tapos mag-download mabagal yung internet which yeah. is possible but yeah. sometimes we are browsing something else hence the delay also so we really have to um yeah. monitor <laughs> yeah A special case talaga ang may ADHD and the you know children with special needs uh we have to have different sets of rules for them. Yes. <laughs> and the next four are uh, in relation to ADHD still, how can we motivate an ADHD child to stay focused on the screen for a reasonable period of time, especially in school activities? Well, ah, Expertise dapat yan ang teacher <laughs> on how to engage the child um, with uh, with the lesson online. Uh, one of the suggestions I had in the lecture would be, you know, formatting the modules into, let's say, games where they are rewarded um, when they give successful answers and things like that. Um, kaya lang yun nga, uh, that requires uh, designing special modules and probably designing apps that would address those issues. Um, hindi kasi ako techie, eh, but I'm sure any one of you who is listening right now who is technical, uh, technologically literate, I'm sure... Uh, you you can address um, such needs because there is such a need for for it right now. Okay, and then um, another one for uh, many kids nowadays uh, are playing the game Among Us. Is it okay for a five year old child? Uh, so this is for the awareness of many. Is Among Us a game? It's a game. Oh, it's an online game. I'm. I, I have not heard of it. Uh, I don't know what it contains. So mahirap sagutin. Uh, usually, naman the I don't know uh, if it's true. The apps merong like suggested age limit or wala. Yes. I don't know. Okay. There should be. Uh, like, um, diba sa TV, when we were all watching TV lang and we did not have computer, computer screens, we had the MTRCB labeling uh, programs as to, um, as to whether they are PG, uh, etc. 
I, I, I think I should be law also. Uh, um, tagging apps and you know online i don't know if there is already but if there isn't there should be so doctor i believe there should be limits also for i i think usually kasi kahit naman po for toys like physical toys for example they state like what age the toy is for so hopefully the game that game has a guide and also, I'm not too familiar yet. I actually am planning on researching on it also and learning about it. I think there are parental control apps to yeah, you should. help monitor yeah. the activities. So yeah, please research on that. I did. I wasn't able to go into that because it's topic. Yes, boy. Here, uh, Ms. Ina. All right, so I think um, we are getting close uh, to the end of our open forum. Uh, we would like to ask if there are any other questions. So if none, um, for Dr. Oliver, po, um, if there is one thing you would like our audience to take away from this webinar, what would it be? <laughs> Wow. Um, just that um, all of the fears that, that um, we have at the back of our minds about the virtual world, um, we should, like, we should learn more about the virtual world so that we don't fear it too much because right now, um, it is the major mode of interaction. And if we are to protect our children from the dangers that it poses, we should likewise, we should be familiar with it. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor, for... Okay. Wala po yung audio for a while, but thank you for the message. <laughs> I'm sure it was very, um, very informative still. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone for all those questions. Um, and I think um, we're moving forward to the next part of our program. Thank you very much, Dr. Oliver. Um, of course, this webinar will not be possible without the help and partnership of our generous pharmaceutical partner this evening, Zydos Healthcare Philippines Inc. So I would like to welcome their product manager, Mr. Fortune Sagabay. Good evening, Mr. Sagabay. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Nang Lim. Good evening, doctors. My name is Fortune once again. I'm the product manager of Zydus Neurosciences. So once again, Zydus is honored to be tonight's industry partner for this very interesting webinar of the Philippine so Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. Tonight's topic on rethink screen time, the new normal for parents and children online, gave us some new perspectives and reminders on maximizing technology at these times in a positive way. So in behalf of Zydus, we thank you for this partnership and we continue to support the PISCAP in activities such as these webinars to, that would give value addition to its audience. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, um, Sir Fortune, for your partnership with us and for um, supporting our activities. And as we promised, we will be announcing our winners before the end of this webinar. So our winners are... Okay, okay. Dr. Ana Margarita Cruz, Iris Marte, and Don Roy Napoles. So kindly expect uh, our uh, representatives from Zydos to um, coordinate with you in terms of... Um, how to receive your prizes. Thank you and congratulations. 
So once again, we would like to thank um, to say thank you to everyone who attended and made this webinar possible. So to show our appreciation and gratitude, I would like to call on the president of the Philippine Society for a Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, Dr. Rodora Concepcion, for the awarding of the digital certificates and closing remarks. Good evening, Dr. Hi, thank you very much to our moderator, Dr. Pauline Nang Lim. And good evening to all and good evening to our speaker, Dr. Georgina Gozo Oliver. Allow me to give a short synthesis of the topic tonight. So rethinking screen time and children's relationship with screens is certainly an important discussion to tackle in this current time of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we have chosen to give this topic to all of you specifically on how families can make the most of reliance on screens, which are helping to maintain sense of normalcy during the lockdown, which also uh, finding the right balance with other important activities. And screen time has taken over many children's lives. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, it has increased due to the online digital homeschooling and whether parents need to rethink their worries about children's screen time. But we in the field of child and adolescent psychiatry have spent the last many years and more than a decade being anxious about the increasing amount of time young people spend in front of screens. We have been skeptical of digital learning compared to face-to-face -face experiences. However, in recent months and for almost a year now, children have been encouraged to dive into digital platforms and exposure like never before. And the questions about how to help or how to keep well online in a time where being outside and together in physical space has not been possible. And parents have sought to employ digital platforms to ensure their children remain connected to friends, and not miss socializing, playing, learning, and sharing. The, di the digital learning experiences have been the best option for children under lockdown. Yet, uh, this is hard to reconcile with our previous worries about limiting screen time. And so we thank our speaker, Dr. Ger Georgina Oliver, for presenting this topic to all of us. I know this is not an easy topic to prepare, and work on Dr. Oliver. So we thank Dr. Oliver for presenting key messages on how to maintain mental health during a long period of social isolation as we deal with children's engagement in digital homeschooling and how parents can balance this for their children. So let me present the certificates for this webinar. The Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Georgina Gozo Oliver as speaker on the topic, Rethink Screen Time, the new normal for parents and children online via Zoom given today, April 15, 2021, and signed by myself, Dr. Rodora Andrea Concepcion as PSCAP president. Dr. Vanessa Kathleen Kainhug as PSCAP Vice President, and Dr. Mary Daryl Joyce Lindo Calleja as PSCAP Board Secretary. Congratulations and thank you, Dr. Oliver, for presenting a very good lecture tonight. PSCAP also presents this Certificate of Appreciation to our MC and moderator in this webinar, Dr. Pauline Elise Nang Lim. Uh, with the same signatories. Our colleague, Dr. Pauline Nang Lim, is currently a fellow in child and adolescent psychiatry at the Medical City. So thank you for facilitating a productive discussion tonight, Dr. Lim. And to the members of our webinar organizing committee, Dr. Mary Daryl Joyce Lindo Calleja, Dr. Christine Elaine Abery, and Dr. Jennifer Neri Duai, a certificate of appreciation is given to all of them with the same signatories. We thank all of them for the technical support in tonight's webinar. 
and for the kind and generous support of our pharmaceutical partner in tonight's webinar and for assisting us with the organized preparations, our sincere acknowledgement to Zaidus Healthcare Philippines Incorporated, to its product manager, Mr. Fortune Sagabay of Zaidus Neurosciences Division, our acknowledgement also to Ms. Divina Grace Dano, the division head of Zaidus Neurosciences for their kind support to PeaceCap. Zaidus Healthcare Philippines will still be our partner in our PeaceCap webinar scheduled this coming June. And thank you for the quiz prize. It will be a good source of learning to our winners and congratulations to all our winners uh, in the quiz. And to Mr. Fortune Sagabay, thank you for playing that humble musical treat by Musica Tria earlier. And I would like to acknowledge also our technical team tonight, the CME at Work, headed by Ms. Marie Annette de Mesa. It was nice working with you and your team, Ms. Maui. And to all the PeaceCap members and all the participants from different partners and different groups who took time to attend tonight's webinar, your certificate of attendance will be sent and issued to all of you once you have accomplished the post-webinar evaluation form. And the link to the evaluation form will be emailed to attendees by CME at work within the next 24 hours. Our webinar tonight was uh, granted one CPD unit and we have Dr. Vanessa Kainhug to thank for working on getting the CPD units for our webinars. We are very happy that we have reached 350 attendees for tonight's webinar. So thank you for attending tonight. And just for some few announcements, um, please save the dates for our next PSCAP webinars. On May 20, we invite you once again to join us in our PSCAP webinar on the topic maternal mental health in pandemic pregnancy with Dr. Elaine Angela Lanes as speaker and Dr. Jennifer Neri Duay as moderator. And on June 17, please join us once again for the topic on therapeutic stories and play therapy in the new normal with Dr. Joy Malinit as speaker and Dr. Marie Perlay Reyes as moderator. Zaidus Healthcare Philippines will be our partner again this coming June. And we invite all our participants tonight to subscribe to our PeaceCap Virtual Library YouTube channel. The webinar tonight will also be uploaded to our PeaceCap YouTube channel to provide psychoeducation to the general public that can be accessible at any time to refresh and add to our learning. So again, this is Dr. Rodora Andrea Concepcion. Thank you uh, once again for sharing your time with us and thank you for your kind attention. Please stay and join us as we end the night with a Peace Cap hymn. Good night and good health to everyone. Speak from far and wide, generation seeking a future right. So Yeah.
Once again, we would like to thank everyone, especially Dr. Um, Oliver, our pharmaceutical partner, Zydus, to PeaceCap and to all our participants in tonight's webinar. I have been your host and moderator for tonight, 